<clears throat> so I'm, like Carl, wondering why I was put on the panel initially, uh, since all metrics are relatively new. Now, I am an early adopter. I did teach an honor seminar last semester on social media, uh, but that does not make me an expert in this. And then I got to thinking, you know what? Maybe I'm here because of the work that I'm doing as the senior associate dean in our college around big data. So since this is about impact, the first thing that I wanted to know is, when you think about the word impact, what do you think of? Are we talking about value? Are we talking about quality? Are we talking about making a difference? And more importantly, and this goes along with both uh, uh, Carl and Sean, what's the evidence? So we're doing a great job at the University of Kentucky. How do we know that? Well, there's lots of evidence out there. We can look at all kinds of things like faculty-student ratio, and we can look at number of majors and numbers of students served, and all kinds of things. But at the end of the day, does that really talk about impact? Big data tells a lot of things, and in many ways, all metrics are and can be synonymous with big data, right? We assess the data that are there, whether we're using aggregators like all metrics or something else, and then we make decisions based on that. The better the data, the better the decisions. But what do we use? Do we use student credit hours or student served or faculty credentials or student placement? Uh, what about rankings? National rankings? That's probably better. That's really how impact factors work. Maybe it's the number of patents. Or, I know, we'll use salaries because faculty that make more money have a bigger impact, right? Yeah. Therein lies the problem with a lot of the artifacts that are used in all metrics. Uh, I am not a naysayer. I'm the first one to go out there and play. But I'm not so sure this is quite ready for prime time. And I appreciate the discussion that we're going to have today. Uh, it was interesting that as I was looking at big data, I actually found all metrics around big data. So how many millions of DVDs per day does the internet content fit on? And you know, so it's, it's tuning into big data as the buzz gets louder. But the big question I have is, are we paying attention to the right things? I don't care if the sign's yellow. I don't care if it has sharp edges. I care that there's a bridge out ahead, right? And the same thing needs to apply with the way we think about um, the impact of the research that we have. So let's turn our attention away from, are we doing a good job at the university? And let's focus on, what about the research impact? It's clear, and we've heard it multiple times, and I figured we would, knowing that I was going to go third, I thought, yeah, everybody's going to be talking about those uh, journal article publication, peer-reviewed, that's the gold standard. Okay, that's true. And I want to go on record as saying that I believe that the expert peer review needs to be the first and primary filter for any of the metrics that we use. Um, if you've been on Facebook, and I assume most of you have, um, I stopped posting to Facebook a long time ago. I still lurk regularly. I like to see the images that are out there. Um, but there are times when I'll spend 10 minutes out there and I'll wonder whether or not I'll ever get those 10 minutes back because I'm sure that I won't. It's just a waste of time. It's not good information. Now, even if you define science as nothing more than an accumulation of knowledge, we have to be confident that it is, in fact, knowledge and not just somebody being able to uh, publish in a vanity press or publish a blog post because anybody can do that right now. So how do we assess that research impact? How might we use all metrics to do that? Um, I'm going to tell you that the current culture and climate at the university, and we're not alone, uh, most Research One universities work the same way we do. We're going to look at the number of expert peer-reviewed publications. Then we're going to look at author order. And if the authors, if the scientist provides it, we'll look at the journal quality. We'll look at the tier level or the scope, international versus national versus regional, and so on. Um, like it if they'll provide the impact factors, though we've talked about some of the problems associated with that. But more than anything, when it comes time for tenure and promotion, we're going to review, we're going to rely on those experts that are writing letters in the field that we trust that say, would you or would you not tenure this individual at your institution? So we're still relying on those experts to say, I know this content, I know this person, and it's worthy. It's had an impact. It's made a difference in the discipline. 
Now, there's a lot of data out there that actually show that impact factors are pretty good predictors, at least in the first five years. So if you've got a higher impact factor, you're going to have more people citing your research. Uh, looks like there's a threshold of around 40 to 45 references that you're going to get from anything that's out there. And again, that's a function of what journal is published in. Uh, so my question is, are we really talking about impact? Or are we talking about empty buzz? Is it just a matter of time somebody went out there and I've got all my friends in Facebook and I'm saying, please repost this article. It was just published this morning. Because that'll drive those numbers up. I'm a little discouraged by the word alt. And I understand the background, right? A lot of times we use the alt when we were talking about use groups uh, back in the day uh, when we still used uh, modems and dial-up to connect to what was out there. Although, I will say something about that. During that time, there was sure a lot more better data available because you couldn't just have anybody dropping things out there. You actually had to understand how the system works to connect to it. Um, I wish it wasn't alt as an alternative. I wish we were thinking about it in terms of value added. What do we, it's in addition to what we're already using. Uh, so, it's usage, downloads and views, it's peer review. I want to really stress that. Um, it's the number of citations, and then it's also some of these other things. I like the idea of bookmarks and conversations. I love the fact that data are available, that you can go in there and run some additional analyses to double check the conclusions. Um, these are some you've already talked about, so I won't have to spend a lot of time here. Plum is where I spent most of my time in preparation for this particular presentation, though Altmetric you've heard about, Impact Story is another. Um, some of these are relatively free and open right now. Whether or not that st they stay that way, I don't know. If the university puts value on this, that'll be one thing. By the way, the entire slide deck that I, that I have here, as well as the PDF, is available online. I'll give you that link at the end of the presentation, so if you want it, you can have it. Um, this is what an altmetric citation might look like. I get a number like I do with ResearchGate. I still don't know what drives that number up. It doesn't look like it's a sum of all those things but there's something driving that. Here's one that's 949, here's one that's 343 tweets, Facebook users, news outlet, video uploads, and so on. Plum X argues that they have meaningful metrics. Really? So more is better? Ever tried to drink from a fire hose? Not sure that's better. Um, they say that they give us a holistic view of research output, and they offer 20 different artifacts that they put into five different categories. Looks like this. We have usage, captures, mentions, social media, and citations. Okay? We have lots of artifacts in each one of these areas. If you follow the link, you'll see all this. So these are only up there for demonstration, not to be read. Here is the usage metrics. Not sure which ones, or if they're using all of them. Here are the captures. So I can use GitHub, or I can use SlideShare, or I can use YouTube. Here's mentions. Wikipedia, GitHub, Source, I don't know how they're all connected yet. Um, social media, the number of likes, the scores, the tweets, all right? And then the citations. There's value in this data, just like I'm, in, I'm intrigued by the big data that I have access to right now at the university so that we can make decisions in our college. But I don't want to make those decisions in the absence of other information that I can verify. Big Data talks about the three V's. They talk about volume, they talk about veracity, and they talk about, um, no, I'm not going to remember what the third one is, hold on. I know, there's three stooges and galls divided into three, I get, there you go. So here's the three V's. Volume, velocity, and variety. Okay. Well, I've developed what I think are the three A's of all metrics, and I'm going to share those with you now hoping that we're paying attention to the right things. Feel like you're in front of a flip chart? Mm -hmm. All right, so again, here's the five different categories. We'll let you decide whether some are better than others. The same article that Carl cited actually argues what the potential advantages are for all metrics. There's more, quote, nuanced understanding. People get to read, discuss, save, recommend, cite. That sounds pretty good. There's more timely data, evidence of impact in days instead of years. Uh, Vince Kellen and I were talking just a little bit before the session started. 
He was talking about an article that was published in the 70s that very few people read. There may have been three people that read it. 30 years later, it ends up being the uh, primary piece that people look at. So I don't know if the days versus the years really gives us value at it. I'll leave that up to you. More artifacts. I do like this idea a lot, especially as it relates to data, but blog posts, videos, slide decks, data sets, software. Okay. And then more impacts. All right. I have a lot of great friends that are on Facebook, but they're not academics. When they read what I write, they look at it and wonder if I'm from a different country. Putting that paper on Facebook or dropping it in an open source place where people can read it won't change the fact that people, there are people that will not be able to access that information. So unless they do what many uh, organizations do, the National Communication Association has something called current trends. And what they do is they take the content of the research article and they write it in a way that it's accessible to a lay audience. Pretty cool idea. Uh, supposedly, that's what journalists do as well. But clinicians, educators, general public, those are the impacts that we're looking for. But I'm not sure that the format in which we write is actually that accessible. So here are my, th my three A's. I have questions like what the two of you have. The first question has to do with acceptance. So let's assume up front that faculty, administrators, professional college colleagues all accept uh, altmetrics. They say, yeah, this works, we're going to use it for tenure, we're going to use it for promotion, we're going to use it for merit. Then the question is, well, which artifacts? Which of those five categories or which of those individual artifacts do we want to look at? And then finally, when should that adoption occur? What many people will say, just as soon as I'm tenured. <laughs> right? As soon as I don't have to worry about where that number is coming from because I've got to figure out a way to game the system. And I don't think we have to. I think we've, we've learned through social media there really are some values associated with the kinds of content that are available. Uh, please keep in mind that I still believe that the primary filter should be peer review um, of experts that understand the content that you're working with. That's how we generate new knowledge. That's how we accumulate that knowledge we call science. Uh, I apologize to anybody in the room that happens to be from the humanities. I understand your artifacts are different. A good book can get you tenure and promotion, right? It probably has more impact than some of the journals in which we publish. All right? And I know the artifacts are different, but in terms of what we're talking about relative to science, I think this is really important. I'll finish by saying we're in a place now where within the next three, four, five years, we are going to see these things. They will be around. It just, it's a matter of how we're going to use them. I'm a big fan of big data. I love it, um, especially if I can interpret it make sense and make sense of, out of it. But I think if you see me running around campus, you will see me with this t-shirt on, which says that as much as I think this is a cool idea, I'm still cautiously optimistic about how it gets used, when it gets used, and whether or not we're really measuring impact. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.